For the last three years, I have been living in Bangalore, and currently, I am facing a very, very major crisis, which most of the Bangaloreans will be relating to, which is the increasing rental prices. So when I got this, I reached out to my best financial advisor, who is my dad. I told him, Dad, I'm paying like thirty thousand rupees in rent. What do you want me to do? The very immediate solution which every parent gives is what he gave to me also. Is why don't you go ahead and buy a house and pay this in the form of EMI? Since then, I have been putting my thinking hats on because it's the most trending question which most of my friends ask me as well, and a couple of our customers reach out and ask me. Now that is when I went to the drawing board, and for the last three hours, I've been doing some research to find out should I buy a house or should I rent a house, and this is what I'm going to tell you as a part of this video. Buying or renting a house has two main factors in it. One is an emotional quotient, and second one is a mathematical quotient. Let me speak about the emotional quotient first. Right from a young age, we have been fine-tuned into this concept of always owning a house. We have seen our parents, we have seen our families, relatives, and even friends looking forward to buying a house one day or the other, and they treat it as a sense of achievement. So that is why even our parents tend to tell that you should have a house one day or the other, and it gives you a form of security. And that is why emotionally we are very connected to the concept of always owning a house. And for every Indian, it is one of the north star goals which they want to achieve in their lives. But let me right now speak the mathematical side of things, and that is where I did a slight research to put it in numbers. Does it make sense to rent a house, or does it make sense for me to buy a house? Let me prove you with theoretical facts as to how exactly renting a house is way better than buying a house. This is a spreadsheet which I prepared, taking references of some of the best influencers out there as well. But you can download this. I'm putting this in the comment section below and in the description below as well. Feel free to plug in your own numbers, play around with the numbers, and take a decision as to renting is better or buying is better. Now let's assume that we're looking at a duration of 15 years. Now let's look at the situation of renting a house. Say that you're paying thirty thousand rupees as a rent. And you fall under thirty percent tax bracket. The effective rent per month turns out to be twenty one thousand rupees after your HRA allowances, etc., etc. And the effective rent what you pay per year is two point five lakh rupees, roughly around. Now let's assume that the average increment on your rent per year is seven point five percent. Then, in a duration of fifteen years. You will end up paying sixty-five thousand rupees. Sorry, sixty-five lakh rupees. I wish it was sixty-five thousand for fifteen years, but you will pay sixty-five lakh eighty-one thousand rupees at the total rent for fifteen years. Now let's change some trajectory across and let's go to buying a house. Now let's assume that the same two BHK which you are living right now, you want to buy. It is roughly around one crore rupees in Bangalore at this point of time. It's a similar trend what we are seeing in some. Uh, Major metropolitan cities. Whenever you want to sort of buy this, if you have all the one crore, well and good. But majority of the cases, we notice that people tend to take loans and pay EMIs in order to get some sort of tax benefit. Now you need a down payment. In some cases, it is ten percent. In some cases, in turn, is it twenty percent? I chose twenty percent over here, which is because that's the most frequent down payment which most of the individuals end up paying. Now the down payment amount turns out to be. Twenty lakh rupees. So you're ending up taking a loan of over eighty lakh rupees. Now let's assume that the interest rate for this loan is seven percent. Mind you, I'm taking a very very less interest rate right now. If you see in the market, the interest rates have already jumped up to as high as nine percent because of the interest rates increment by RBI at this point of time. Since we are looking at a fifteen year rental duration, I also need to make sure that the loan duration is also fifteen years. So. I am assuming that the loan duration is fifteen years, so your monthly EMI will turn out to be seventy one thousand nine hundred and six rupees. Now, again, since in the rent side, I assume you to be under thirty percent tax bracket. Over here also, I am assuming it to be thirty percent tax bracket. So the effective interest rate, what you will be incurring, is just four point nine percent. If it is seven percent, I am just reducing the thirty percent tax bracket and the benefits what you get out of it. And you end up having an interest of four point nine percent. 
So therefore, your effective EMI will turn out to be roughly around 62,848 rupees. Remember, these are tax claims which you have to do. That is when you will get all these. Uh, that's when you will be sort of ending up paying these effective EMIs rather than the main EMI. Now let's see what is the interest you are paying over a period of time. The interest what you will end up paying throughout is 33 lakhs 12,000 rupees. But that's not it. Since you own a house, you'll also have some sort of maintenance. The average maintenance, what we're saying is roughly around 3000 rupees at 0.4% of the entire amount. And it's turning out to be 3,333 3, rupees. And also every society has this rule that it also increases by an X percentage every year. So I'm assuming it to be 5%. So the overall maintenance, what you're going to pay over a period of time, it is 88,90,000 rupees. So the total cost which you are incurring to buy a house is effectively turning out to be 1.42 crores. This is inclusive of your lump sum amount. This is inclusive of your interest paid. This is inclusive of your loan. And this is also inclusive of your maintenance. These are a couple of factors which people miss out while validating how to buy a apartment. They miss out on their uh, maintenance expenses, etc., etc., and this is where we made sure to include everything. Now let's see how exactly it is effective to buy a house or rent a house. Now let's come to this side and see how much you are saving if you end up renting a house. When you rent a house, you don't need to give the down payment. This 20 lakh which you have right now, which you were supposed to give as a down payment to buy a house, you can use that to invest somewhere where you get at least 10% returns. Another thing, you are saving roughly 41,800 rupees on your EMI. This is just the difference between your e effective EMI and your total rent. And that is the additional amount which you have in surplus, which you could also utilize to invest in healthy assets. Let's assume that you're getting at least 10% returns. You need to make sure that all your investments give you at least 10% returns because the current national inflation is 8.1, roughly around 8%. So it is always better to have a healthy return on the investments wherever you're saving and investing. The total value of the down payment eventually in a span of 15 years will turn out to be 89 lakhs because the interest keeps on compounding and in the long run, you are just getting up roughly around 89 lakh rupees saved for a span of 15 years. That is the power of compounding guys. That is how beautiful compounding is. We have 20 lakh rupees just within a short span of 15 years. Of course, it's not so short as it looks in the long span of 15 years, it grows to 89 lakh rupees and the total EMI, which you are potentially paying for your house, that sums up to be roughly around 1.73 crores if you end up saving it in asset classes which are giving you at least 10% returns. Now, what is the net benefit you're getting out of saving this surplus which was supposed to go to EMI but you're ending up saving because you're living on rents? It is roughly around 1.9 crores which is absolutely massive. It looks, it looked very small initially, like just 41,000 rupees EMIs and a 20 lakh lump sum initially, but eventually for a span of 15 years, this grew into almost 1.9 crore rupees. Now let's see what is the same thing happening on the buying side. Let's assume that every year your house is growing by 7%. The value of your apartment, your house is growing by 7%. The value of your property after a period of 15 years, it is turning out to be 2.7 crores. Now, will that be the same net benefit what you will be having? Absolutely no, because net benefit will be calculated by you subtracting the total cost of your house and also the value of the property, what it is at 15 years later. So effectively, it is turning out to be 1.3 crore only. Now, if you compare both these values, the net benefit what you're getting out of renting a house is a massive 1.9 crore or almost near to 2 crores but the net benefit of buying a house, it is roughly around 1.3 crores. So net net, you're getting an added roughly around 60 lakh rupees, which is absolutely, absolutely massive. So it makes so much sense to rent a house and then accumulate this money and then go ahead and buy a property rather than just going and buying a property at a time we are slightly crunching on cash. But again, 
this is one of the most effective ways to sort of validate should you buy a house or should you rent a house as i already told you this spreadsheet is going to be in the comments and uh, description section below so feel free to plug in the numbers you might speak with your loan agents you might uh, validate with your current rent as well and you'll get to know the right amount how much you'll be potentially saving if you're going ahead with renting a house versus buying a house now that is how renting a house makes more sense financially than owning a house but let me also tell you the pros and cons of buying a house versus renting a house let me first address the pros of buying a house firstly it is your hard asset it is your property you will always have the sense of inclusion that you own something of yours it's a very big asset which will always be there with you secondly you absolutely have no landlord tensions you hear your friends telling these 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 issues which they have with the landlords right you will never keep having them and the third one is if you end up having this apartment or house in a really good area there is huge chance of property appreciation because of which your asset value might actually actually go up in the long run now let me speak about the cons of owning a house firstly a lot of maintenance expenses and taxes will be incurred by you especially in the long run though it might be small in the immediate short run it will be compounding and turning out to be a huge lump sum amount in the long run secondly owning a house will make you stick only to one particular location for example say that i'm buying a house in bangalore today and tomorrow i have to move to hyderabad for some xyz random reasons it makes my decision very very difficult to move to a new location and that is something which every working individual faces for example the job might be in bangalore tomorrow it might be in gurgaon tomorrow it will be in mumbai that makes life a bit difficult and thirdly the biggest concern of owning a house is if you want to book some sort of profits it is one of the most illiquid assets to sell in order to get any kind of capital gains so these are some of the biggest cons for owning a house let's look into what are the biggest advantages and disadvantages of renting a house let me speak about the pros of renting a house firstly the maintenance expenses what's needed for repairing a house will never come on to you your landlord takes care of everything The second biggest advantage of living in a rented house is you can move across freely to different locations whenever you need as well. For example, your job is asking you to move from Bangalore to Hyderabad, you can take that step very very easily. Thirdly, you are absolutely not affected by how exactly the market prices of the property are moving up and down because on one hand you just don't own the property and that is an issue which the owner will be sort of concerned about. The pros of renting a house looks so exciting and crisp but let me speak about the cons of renting a house. Firstly, landlord troubles. It's a very 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 big issue. I guess everyone you and me will be relating to it so much. There's so many restrictions, there's so many prohibitions that you always need to abide by a lot of restrictions put by a landlord and your society. Secondly, you will always miss out on the sense of ownership that this house will never belong to you or you're staying in someone else's house that is mostly psychological in nature but the third issue of renting a house is one of the biggest problem which everyone is facing today that is when you get to move to a new apartment the process of finding a new home is absolutely absolutely different firstly the rents are skyrocketing secondly there are huge brokerage charges which are incurred and thirdly it is taking painfully long period of time to find a good home and especially if you're a bachelor i don't even need to tell you the problems with it because bangalore mein at least ghar kisi ko nahi dete in terms of bachelor lives so this is how buying a house versus renting a house looks like and i hope the research what we did and the insights what we shared with you would be useful for you to take some really good decisions when you want to buy a house or to rent a house so if you like the content what we are sort of sharing please make sure to like share and subscribe our channel and please do comment below what do you think is the better one buying or renting a house